here. Um, today we're going to look at another type of computer interaction which is to look at computers for communication and there's a phrase for this that's been around in the literature for ages called computer mediated communication also known as CMC when it gets discussed and let's just take a look very briefly at some of the concepts to help target your reading when you're looking at chapter four in particular around um, engaging with emotional computing, effective computing, uh, and so on. So if we take a look right here in the middle about computer mediated communication, how can we situate that? Well, there are a bunch of things that computer based communications allow to happen that are difficult when face to face but seem to have particular value when um, we have these opportunities and how we use these opportunities also says a lot about us as a culture but let's just review a little bit here so we have this notion that we were talking about last time when looking at cognition about types of interaction and I asked the question is all interaction uh, really some form of externalized cognition or interaction design interface types really some form of inter, uh, externalized cognition in which if you may recall when something is an externalized cognition we're using a device to do something for us that we don't want to necessarily hold in our brain whether that's writing a document or particularly things like to-do lists um, or remembering how long something is going on for or actually being able to forget how long we're doing something because an alarm is going to remind us that we can think of in terms of task support for externalized cognition. Um, the other thing that we can look at is that interaction devices actually help us to carry out processes. And I guess you could look at word processing as, as, as a type of process, but also where we have to deliver something. So a, a process might be uh, going shopping or actually completing a game or engaging with a game where we are... Um, focusing in different degrees on having to engage with the system to complete a particular um, task. So what you're probably seeing here is that some tasks blend. So there's the notion of something that's an externalized cognition thing where oh, I don't want to forget to remember the milk, so I've got a reminder for that. But I also have this shopping tasks that I'd like to do, but what you probably notice is that these other tasks, like going shopping, uh, as opposed to simply picking up milk, if you want to shop at a particular store, there's a particular way of doing that, and so, or playing a game, there's a particular way to play a game, so that the system is reflecting the constraints of those other uh, types of engagement. So, uh, and another blending we might have here is the next type that we're looking at here, which is this notion of comms technology, where uh, the computer is actually helping us to connect with other people and how it mediates that communication. And again, we get the word media and mediation are not unrelated uh, to look at what does the computer bring to this when we have uh, this kind of um, interaction supported communication. Well, some of the things that it certainly does is to enable us to think about time within communication. So on the one hand, we have synchronous, and on the other, it's asynchronous. So when something is synchronous, it's happening together. You have synchronized your watches, you're doing something ensemble, whereas asynchronous means that things can happen out of time. So you can think of classic examples of communication that enable this is anything from somebody leaving somebody a message on their phone to using email. Email is the mainstream asynchronous communication device. Interestingly that when we're in an office environment and we're sending people messages who are right down the hall from us, we're not just using that because it's asynchronous because we will just go and talk with them or they'll email us right back. So the asynchrony is very, very brief, almost to the point where it's synchronous communication. But the email, the fact that we're using email instead of just talking about it, what could be going on there? That's a nice uh, exercise. Let me encourage you to think about is why use email if you can just talk to the person? Uh, what are some of the affordances uh, that the email thing gives you, that email digital uh, letter gives you. Now another question to think about within computer-mediated communication is this sense of what happens to time when you're online. Well, some folks say it disappears. Um, and that's good to think about 
but also what happens to space. So if you have this notion of asynchronous communication, not only do you not have to be somewhere in the same time, but you don't have to be there at the same place. And there are certain advantages and disadvantages to that. If we look at some of these examples of online communication tools, everything from Twitter, uh, Skype is more synchronous communication, but as your textbook talks about, if you look at something like Skype, is that when we're communicating, we use certain cues when we're in a synchronous environment uh, from tokens where that could be a, even a glance where we look at somebody, we wave to them, we say it's your turn to come into the conversation. We can have awareness of somebody's body language, these notions of subtle cues, uh, whether one is sharing the space or talking over it, how you wish to engage with somebody. All those kinds of cues are really easily there when we're in person with somebody, but as soon as we step away from being in person with somebody, even when we're using the screen, like we're looking at the Skype call here and supposedly seeing everybody's happy faces uh, when talking online, is that this is fantastic. Now all of a sudden all that problem is, is solved about missing these cues, except for the fact that of course all you see is somebody from the neck up and everybody's in front of you at the same time. So there are some potential challenges to being able to create a truly powerful synchronous environment. Does that mean that the best communication done by computers is actually asynchronous where you don't have to manage that messy whole body human problem? And there have been tons of explorations of this recently, which the uh, text speaks to a little bit. Uh, one of my favorite examples, not necessarily my favorite apps, but a favorite example of how you can reduce communication online is something like Yo, where all you're doing is finding a friend and you hit the button and it sends the word Yo. Uh, a question about that might be, well, what's that doing? Why would that be satisfactory to us? And there are some anthropologists who suggest that this kind of uh, communication uh, brief touches of somebody is, serves the same function as, as um, uh, picking fleas off uh, monkeys. These, this social grooming is a way of saying, I care about you, I'm aware of you. It's not necessarily because you you actually need to take a bath in the, in the monkey or ape world, but that, that contact is a socially acceptable form of, of staying in touch. And we are very keen to stay in touch with our own tribe and to find, as we do on Facebook, either members of our tribe or to expand our tribal membership and network like crazy. And there's some very interesting books, I'm going to add that too here, is this notion of what a network is and also what networking is in terms of us as humans and our sense of survival and safety and why different types of communication work. So one thing you might want to take a look at if you look at Snapchat is compare Snapchat to Facebook to Twitter in order to look at concepts like synchrony and asynchrony and how they're being used and what is important about the way they foreground any aspect of their communication. So yo simply says yo and all you can do is say yo back. What's the value of that? Um, why is that useful? Similarly, Snapchat uh, the communications are ephemeral. Nothing lasts. Compare that with email. What are the differences? What are the pros and cons of each of them? How do they take advantage of space? And one of my uh, recent concepts around here in terms of communication is that a lot of this online communication um, takes a lot of the skills practice out of how to communicate with people one-to-one. -one. Communicating with each other in the real environment, something that geeks are famous for not being able to do, which is just not true, it's again, it's a skills-based thing, is that it's tough. We're designed to do it, we have to do it, we have a lot of hormones related to our performance to be in a group, everything from the hormones that make us happy and feel satisfied to the ones that make us feel better when we're being hugged. Oxytocin is a great example of that. Um, so, Quickies to think about again is recommended is to put a bunch of these different kinds of computer mediated communication tools together. Look at what their interaction is supporting. Again, with Yo, there's one very restricted interaction, does it in a colorful way. What is potentially going on there in terms of what communication actually means? Because communication might mean uh, I want to get information to you versus. 
uh, I'd like to hang on to you and tell you that I'm here, or similarly, have you tell me that you're around and uh, the tribe is safe and I'm happy and I can do this assignment. So those are a few of the things to think about again around the importance of looking at the role of interaction types not just as externalized cognition or as process support but as mediating communication and what the pros and cons are of each. So for instance some people say by using GPS we're losing our ability to navigate in space a question might be, if we are um, relying tremendously on uh, these kinds of non-physical, atemporal, uh, non-synchronous ways of communicating, are we losing very important skills that we're designed to use for our thriving and survival to, um, uh, to be effective human beings? And you might ask yourself, what's that bag of sugar doing? Why is she comparing um, being online? a lot to do our communications with sugar. How could they possibly go together? Maybe we'll take a look at that next time. In the meanwhile, I uh, hope that is helpful to you. And again, this connects with chapter four. And if you have questions, put them on the wiki. I'll look forward to seeing them. And if you want to join me over here on Twitter, it's at M-C-P-H-O-O. -O. And uh, cool, thank you very much for, for tuning in and I look forward to your thoughts. Bye now.